Okay. All right. So now you just stepped onto one of my uh, interest areas, search query performance. So I spent a lot of time on this in Are terms you... of what is included, what is not included in search query performance. So the final, in the final analysis, having spoken to some Amazon engineers, this is what's included. Sponsored product based on the placement. Not the whole thing, but based on the placement. If the sponsored product is on the search results page, top or the rest of the search, then it's included. Otherwise, it's not yes. included. So in other words, if you are if you look at the sponsored product performance, sponsored product campaign performance, and you say, okay, it's a thousand clicks on a particular keyword, and then you go to search query performance and it shows 3,000 clicks, you cannot simply extract the 1,000 from 3,000 and say, oh, I got 2,000 clicks organically. No, it all comes down to placement. So number one. Number two, sponsored brand, sponsored display, not included. So yeah. those clicks also need to be uh, added if you want to see the total picture. Now comes where I have a bit of a problem with this approach that you uh, shared with us. They have that search query performance report has only 24 hour attribution. In other words, right. anything that was uh, either added to cart or purchased if they took place in 24 hours, that's all that's included. So as you know, people don't buy immediately. So they they take, like for example, all the advertising reports for the purposes of uh, measuring and tracking ACOS, we look at seven days, right? So uh, here we don't have that option. So therefore, aren't we leaving out some credible amount of data by simply looking at the 24 hour performance when we calculate the purchase share divided by impression share. Right. So, you know, all the points you mentioned are exactly the way I understand it also. The, it doesn't include all the the, the ads. It, it is based on uh, placement and the third thing of 24 hour attribution. All three of those things are accurate. Now, will I just discard SQP because it has less data? No, because it still tells me what Amazon thinks are the most relevant keywords for me. And I'm going to take that list because if I can align with what Amazon already thinks of me, I have a better chance uh, than trying to figure out new keywords that are not even on that list, right? So at least those keywords that are in that list need to be looked at uh, with some extra focus, right? We can't right. just ignore them. So for that purpose, that list is valuable to me. Another uh, important uh, way in which we filter out the SQP report is based on the median price. Now, what is median price? In the comprehensive download, since, uh, you know, uh, Nick, you're very into SQP, you'll know that there's a comprehensive download. Uh, and then there's also extra columns that you can um, display. One of the extra columns is uh, median price point. So what that tells me is that uh, for a particular keyword, there is what Amazon thinks is the average price of the product purchased when that keyword was entered. So let's say the average or median price point of a search query is showing up as $40. And let's say my product is $100. Should I be going after that keyword because my product is not going to uh, you know, be anywhere close to that? I should probably not. That does not make sense because anytime someone types that keyword, they're going to end up buying that cheaper product. So why waste my my um, ad dollars on trying to push that keyword more than any other more low hanging fruit. So the way I look at SQP is for any low hanging stuff that I can lay my hands on. You know, uh, it's aligned with Amazon's understanding of uh, my product, and uh, if I can find any, uh, you know, uh, like uh, 
overlap with uh, what they think my product is and what I know my product is, then I will pick that uh, Venn diagram of you know overlap and I will an analyze that for the best performing keywords. Now, because it has only 24 hour attribution, this means that the purchase share is, is only gonna get better. If let's say I had 70 attribution, right. the purchase share that I'm using is only gonna get better. So that average that uh, I have set, purchase share divided by impression share, the numerator is gonna go up uh, with more attribution. So I'm gonna take it uh, as my base, yeah. as my very you, you base, know. yeah. Now again, you know, two, two engineers talking to each other. So what I, <laughs> what, what I yes. would do is, uh, I mean, this is first of all, this is a this is a great way to separate out. So think about it this way: uh, if you have any purchases at all, because if you have no purchases, zero. So this is irrelevant. But if you have any purchases at all, which happened in the first twenty four hours, that means something. So you want to pay attention to those. Period. Anyway, so that's a good way. Um, what I would do on top of what you suggested is, is a little bit more complex, but I will track over time. In, in other words, take one ASIN and then take multiple reports like month one or week one, week two, week three, week four, and then how many times that keyword scored. And the chances are that keyword will not even appear in some of those. So if you looked at, say, 12 periods, and in all 12 periods out of 100 keywords, 18 of them appeared in all 12, that's a, definitely a win. Doesn't matter, the, the percentage doesn't even matter anymore because right. what you're looking at is the consistency in... in yeah. uh, so in other words, I would be measuring the consistency of the performance of a keyword rather than how much it's getting. Yeah. So yeah, totally. That's, a, that's I, another way. Uh, well, and uh, what a great approach. Right? I love it's it. A, it's, it's a, it calls for a time series calculation. It's a lot more complex, but yes. uh, nevertheless, it would pay off. Great. Totally. Um, yeah. I mean, that uh, time series, the way you mentioned it, is exactly what we have in our Locus Studio. We've actually created time series showing a uh, month over month uh, movement. And you're absolutely right. In some months, those words appear in the top 100 and in some months they just drop off because of data sufficiency. So it's a combination of all of that. And if you see it over time, you will find the ones that are consistent. Those are your gems. You want to pick them up. Yeah. Cool, cool. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so how many have we done so far? Six. We've done six. <laughs> six. Okay. Let's do the seventh one and then, then okay. we'll play the rest by ear. Okay, got it.